Thank you, Levi. Thank you, Aiden. Thanks, John. <laughs> hey, that's worth coming right there to hear that. Wait, wait for me, Levi. That's... All right, let's go ahead and grab our bulletins. On the front page, it says, In every season, more hope, more love, more Jesus. And on the bottom, one of my favorite verses, I've come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. I'm going to talk about that today. It's, it's, just, it's just another way God's working because Patty made this bulletin without knowing what I'm going to preach. And, and I got the message from the Lord about what to preach and they, they looks like we kind of got together and worked this out but we didn't the Holy Spirit did on the inside Jesus in all his glory came down as a babe in swallowing clothes and poor circumstances lived on earth with trials and tribulations yet not sin to die for our sins that we may have eternal life and to see him face to face this gives us more hope more love and more Jesus and on the back page when we choose to follow Jesus, our whole life changes direction. More hope, more love, and more Jesus. I'm going to start out with a joke. I've said this one before, but it's been a while. But it kind of goes, with, it does go with my message. So, um, there was an elderly lady. She was a Christian. She'd come out every morning out on her front porch, coming out praising Jesus, praising Jesus, praising Jesus. She'd be out there for at least a half hour, 45 minutes, praising Jesus at the top of her lungs, shouting out praises and thanksgiving to her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And next door, there was a grumpy old guy, and boy, he just hated to hear it. You know, every time she came out praising Jesus, he just made him mad. He got madder and madder and madder. And one day, uh, she came out, and she said, praise you, Jesus, praise you, Jesus, praise you, Jesus, praise you, Lord. And she said, Lord, she said, I don't have any food, Lord, but I know you'll provide. I know you'll provide, Lord. You've taken care of me all these years. I know you'll provide. Bring me some food, Lord. I don't have any. Bring me some food. Praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you, Jesus. So while this neighbor was sitting there listening and, and looking at her, oh, she ain't got no food. She ain't got no food. So he thought he'd do something that, that would, would uh, destroy her faith in Jesus. So he went out that night and he bought a bunch of food and put it on her porch. And then when she came out in the morning, she saw the food. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. You always take care of me. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. And he jumped up from behind the hedges and he said, Hey, hey, lady, that Jesus didn't get it for you. I got it for you. I brought those groceries. What are you thinking about that? Your Jesus didn't do nothing for you. Why are you praising him? You ought to be praising me. And she looked at him and she said, Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. I needed food. You got me food, Jesus, and you even got the devil to buy it for me. <laughs> All right. That's going to go along with my message, too. I, I, I love this book. This, this book changed my life. This book changed my life. Going to a Bible study one day, I, I chose. I made a decision to, to chose to go and, and find out what was in this book. This book is God's love letter to us. I, I can't say it any better than that. It's his love letter to his children. Um, I'm going to try and give you an illustration of God's love. When when Luke was little, and now Levi's little, you know, I take him to the store. They want to go to the store with Papa, and uh, I take him to the store, and and. and uh, Every time we get to the store, I say, you stick right next to me. I want you right here next to my side. And I said, you don't move. You don't get away from my side until we get across the street to the store. And they would. They were young. I mean, they were very young. I don't know if it was two, but at least three, three, four, five years old. 
and they listened to me and when we got out of the car they stuck there right next to my side and we walked across the street uh, a lot of times the Dollar Tree we go in there and they got a bunch of good stuff and when, same thing when we came out I said you stick right next to me and they would and that's kind of a picture of our loving God just stick next to me and I'm going to get you some good stuff I'm going to get you some good stuff I want us to open the Bible to Deuteronomy. This is one of my favorite verses. In fact, Deuteronomy 28 and Deuteronomy 30, when I first got saved, was kind of my foundation. It was kind of my foundation. Um, I understood, you know, I know the Lord gave me a lot of wisdom and understanding at a birth, when I was a young Christian. And uh, But this is one thing we need to understand. And we're kind of going back to basics, and maybe a lot of you guys feel I already know this, but but when I look at Christians and I look at their lives, I I I, I got to wonder if we really got the understanding that that God wants us to have. But let's go to Deuteronomy chapter thirty, and let's look at nineteen and twenty, verse nineteen and twenty. It says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. This is God speaking. I've set before you life and death. Life is going to heaven, life with God. Death is separation from God, going to hell. I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed, your children, may live. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. And thou mayest obey his voice. And that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give them. Of course, that's the promised land, the abundant life I talk about in John 10, 10 all the time. But this is how good our God is. He, he says, I set before you heaven, hell, life with me or death without me. Choose which one you want. God doesn't send anybody to hell. People choose to go to hell. God didn't send any person or one person to go to hell. When the two guys were hanging on the cross next to Jesus, they both had a chance to go to heaven, didn't they? But only one of them said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into my kingdom. He chose to trust Jesus to take care of him for all eternity. He made that choice. Choose. Life or death. Choose blessing or cursing. And we might think, well, that's, that's crazy. Ain't nobody going to choose cursing. Oh, yeah, we do. Christians choose cursing all the time. They do. I like what Creflo Dollar said one day. He says, God said choose life or death and blessing or hell. And, and he said, if you're too dumb to figure that out, God has to tell you to choose life. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Why would anybody choose hell? More people choose hell than they do heaven. I've talked to hundreds of people, hundreds, maybe thousands of, probably more like thousands of people. Jesus loves you. He wants, he wants you to come to heaven. He wants you to be part of his family. Ask him to save you. I've heard, I heard that for 38 years before I was saved. He's the Savior. He's the Savior. He's the, yeah, he was the Savior, but he wasn't my Savior. Until I asked him to save me. He's not my savior. I like that song. Hell lost one more. Is that what it was? Hell lost one more. That was good. Hell lost one more. 29 years ago. Hell lost another one. I asked Jesus to save me. Choose. Choose. People say I believe in Jesus. No they don't. If you haven't asked Jesus to save you, you don't believe in Jesus. I don't know what you believe in, but you don't believe in Jesus. Somebody could say, uh, try to give an illustration. I believe in Jesus. Yeah, I, I, I believed in Jesus in a certain way for 28 years, but it wasn't as he wasn't my Savior. I didn't believe he could save me, and I didn't even know he could save me. I didn't. I never put it together. He's called the Savior. What does that mean? One who saves. 
Saves you from what? Saves us from sin, death, and the grave, and hell. He saves us. Choose. Choose Jesus. And have eternal life. And then he says, choose blessing and cursing. Choose blessing and cursing. Think about it. I talked a little bit about last week. Adam and Eve, what did they do? They choose to listen to Satan. They choose to disobey God. And they went from the garden of paradise to a cursed life. Pharaoh chose not to believe God, not to obey God, didn't he? And what happened? God sent nine plagues on, on Egypt. The tenth plague, he lost his firstborn son. Then he tried to go get Israel, and, and God drowned the rest of his, his uh, army in, in the Red Sea. Figure it out. Figure it out. Bad choices. Jonah chose not to obey God. God told him to go to Nineveh. Jonah went the other way. He ended up in the belly of a great fish for three days. Then he said, okay, Lord, uh, what was that you want me to do? Samson, he chose not to obey God. His final end was he was captured. They put out his eyes, and he was a slave, pushing a great mill to crush, crush wheat and corn. Think about Judas. He walked with Jesus for three years, but he chose not to, not to believe in Jesus. He chose to betray him. Jesus said it had been better that he had not been born. What about Satan? <laughs> Satan was God's greatest angel. He was in charge of worship in heaven. He was the bright morning star. And he chose. He chose not to submit to God, not to obey God. And we all know his end. I love the fact that God gives me a choice. My life is not a random circumstance or good luck or it just happened. My, my, my life is a carefully devised plan. Everything in my life is a carefully devised plan. I, this, this just didn't happen. This church just didn't happen. My marriage to Patty just didn't happen. Everything that's gone on in my life has is, is gone through Jesus' approval. I've chosen to submit myself to him. I've chosen to give my life to him. I, I, I say this all the time. When we decide that Jesus is wiser and smarter than we are, that's when our life changes. That's when our life changes. Because too many Christians are still trying to do it their way. You know, some, some people have their foot in the church and their foot in the world, and, and it, it, it doesn't work out. It doesn't work out. I like what, what John says, and, and let's turn there, John 10.10. 10. Probably my favorite chapter in the whole Bible. And I, I don't know if every I, 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 I take us there a lot, but today I'm going to talk a little bit about it. John 10.10, 10, Jesus says, the thief, that's Satan, he's coming not. The only thing he wants to do is still kill and destroy. I didn't put this on. And uh, Jesus said, I've come that they might have life, and they might have it more abundantly. Again, that's God's plan. Th this isn't for everybody. It's an offer. It's an offer. Don't, don't think just because you got saved, oh, I'm going to have this abundant life. Oh, no, 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 no. It's an offer. What has he said? That they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Not every Christian has that abundant life. It's an offer. Jesus says, I'm, I'm going to offer you life. I'm going to offer you abundant life. Do you want it? I love the story about the Jews. It's, it's just a picture. It's a picture of salvation. When they left Egypt and they put the blood, that signified they were saved. They became children of God because they trusted the blood to save them. And as they walk through a wilderness, when you get saved, you're going to walk through a wilderness. I don't care who you are. You're going to walk through a wilderness. You don't know the Bible. You're not sure about everything. You're just trying to do the best you can. You, don't, you, you, you need to grow spiritually. 
they were supposed to walk 11 days and get to the, uh, the land of milk and honey and have this abundant life. Well, you know what? They never got there. Why? Because they disobeyed God. They made a choice. They made a choice. And they never got to the abundant life. And there's some Christians out there that will never get to the abundant life. They're not going to have abundant joy, abundant peace, abundant love, abundant strength, abundant faith, abundant hope, abundant wisdom, abundant understanding, abundant prosperity, abundant knowledge. They're, they're not going to have that. They're not going to have it. It's an offer. God makes us an offer. And when we choose, I, I, when I saw how bad it was out today and I, and I had to throw ice or salt all the way to get to the car, I just thought, man, I said, we're probably going to be light today. We weren't. Everybody that, that, that is usually here is here. We, we chose. We chose to come and be in God's house today. We chose a blessing for our life. It's a choice. The more God sees our willingness to, to please him, we're choosing today. You got here. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy for us. I prayed the whole time. Lord, don't let me fall as I throw this ice, carry my bag, carry my salt bag, and try to get out to the car on, on ice. God sees that we could have just stayed home today. Oh, it's icy out. I'm going to stay home. He sees that. He sees our effort to get here, to be in his house. When we cho choose to come to his house, we get blessed. When we chose choose to come to Bible study, I'll tell you what, I know one of the reasons my life is blessed because of Bible study. I've been going to Bible study since I got saved. I never miss Sunday, I never miss Wednesday. The more you're coming to hear God's word and being in God's house, the more, you, you know, we're going to be blessed for it. This is not God, this is not Bill Sandoval's church, it's not his plan. This is Jesus Christ's church and this is his plan. We don't have Bible study because I thought it would be a good idea. We have Bible study because Jesus said that's a good idea. Everything we do here is because Jesus felt it was a good idea. I, I know how I've grown over the years. And just like today, I, I messed up by not getting that guy to salt the parking lot. I messed up. I mess up sometimes. You know, don't 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 think I'm perfect because I'm not. But the only one here that comes close is Jim, and, and we're not even gonna. We're not even going to go there, but I've just, I was, you know, I've grown as a pastor, and then hope, you know, we, I've seen the growth in people in this church, you know, people that that didn't come to Bible study, now they're coming to Bible study, people that that maybe weren't telling people about Jesus, now are telling people about Jesus. Uh, Every opportunity, God, God, just like when Jesus gave us an offering, that offer, uh, John 10, 10, he gives us offers all the time. He gives us opportunities all the time to be blessed. I like to choose blessing. A pastor is, is just a servant. Sometimes they call them ministers. Minister just means servant. I'm just a servant of Jesus Christ. Why would he want me to be a pastor? You know, I... I, I I used to say when I was a young pastor, I said, yeah, I still think he made a mistake. Um, I, I, I know why Jesus wants me to be his pastor, because for six years he saw me serving him. For six years he saw me coming every week to clean the church, to come and do whatever needed to be done, to paint, to sweep the floors, to, to shovel the snow. I get there early to shovel the snow. That's when I was in good shape and I could do it. He saw me doing whatever I could do for him, for his church and for his people. He saw me serving him for six years, and, and then he says, "Well, you know what? I think you could. I think you could serve me as being a pastor. I think you show me already right now. You have a servant's heart. The reason Jesus abundantly blesses my house is, is because I abundantly bless his house." That's the spiritual law of sowing and reaping. Serving is a choice. I've chosen to serve Jesus Christ. And I, and I don't do it for the for the blessing. I, I do it because I love him. I do it because I'm not one of the ones that got to be going to hell. I just, I wake up every morning amazing grace. I'm still amazed I'm saved. 
I'm still amazed I'm saved. 29 years and I'm still amazed. Tithing. Tithing is a choice. You only have two choices. Give God his tithe or rob God of his tithe. People don't want to hear that. David Jeremiah used to teach every January, he teach on tithing for the first month. Because he said, God's first, we're going to teach on tithing every January. And you know what? David Jeremiah's got one of the biggest churches in the world. And you know what? His, his attendance was lowest on January than it was all year. I don't get that. I, I, when I first heard about tithing, I said, man, sign me up. 10% of my income, and he says he'll open the windows of heaven and, and, and pour out blessings. There's not enough room to receive it. Sign me up. I've been signed up for 29 years. I, bless me, Lord. I mean, I, if there wasn't even a blessing attached to it, and God said to give him the tithe, I'd still give him the tithe. But I, I'll take the blessing. I, I'll take the open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings on me. I'll take that. I'm not going to refuse that. It's a choice. A few months ago, a guy told me, or the Lord told me to tell a guy about tithing, and it was, it was to me, it was a warning. They chose not to heed the warning. Um, everything's going on good for him right now. Just like last week, he ain't seeing the big picture. You really think you can rob from God and it's going to be all right? It might be all right now, but you, you don't see the big picture. I see the big picture. I see when I choose blessings, when I choose serving Jesus Christ, when I choose to be obedient, I see the big picture. I knew one day I was going to have a beautiful Christian wife. I knew it. That even, I was serving, 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 and I knew one day I saw the big picture. I saw the big picture. I saw my life was going to be so abundantly blessed. I saw the big picture. God's promises are true. I think it's a true statement. Our lives are defined by the choices we make, aren't they? Aren't they? Think about it. I choose to trust Jesus to save me. I'm going to heaven. Guy next door didn't choose Jesus to save him. He's going to hell. I used to have a shirt that said, Choose Jesus. Remember the bracelets they used to have? WWJD? What would Jesus do? That was real big 10 years ago or something. Um, I want us to go to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. And I can't cover everything in, in, uh, in one sermon. I can't. But the Lord put a few two things for us to cover today. This is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Proverbs 13, verse 20. And again, Proverbs was written by Solomon, the man God gave more wisdom than anybody else. But look what he says. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Man. I could preach on that all day. He that walks with the wise will be wise, and a companion of fools will be destroyed. If your friends' names are Moe, Larry, and Curly, you might want to think about choosing different friends. <laughs> seriously I, I've worked in a prison for 25 years most of them guys in prison are there because their friends were fools their friends were fools think about it think about it you're hanging out with, with wise Christian people they're going to take you down a different road than if you're hanging about with people who are disobedient to God, maybe not even saved. Take you down the wrong path. Think about Samson. Think about Samson. 
He didn't want to marry a Jewish woman. He didn't want to marry one of God's people. He wanted to go out and, and find uh, Satan's people. And he, he wanted to be with a Satan's woman. And look what happened to him. It's just a good example of that. Do you remember how Jesus was always walking around depressed and unhappy and sad and didn't have no joy and no peace? Remember all that? Neither do I. Neither do I. So so why do we? Why do we? I, 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 one of my, like I always say, is one of my favorite verses, but it is. Look at John 15. I have... Sometimes I gotta remind myself about John 15, but I I, I live it every day of my life, so it's, it's it's kind of pretty natural to me. I'm not gonna cover everything, but I want to jump in at verse 11. Let's jump in verse 10. I wish I could time to preach on John 15. John 15 is one of the most awesome first chapters in the Bible. But Jesus says, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Abide means to live. You live in the love of Jesus. Even as I kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. And then he says, these things I have spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Most Christians don't get this. Most Christians don't get this. Jesus supernaturally, my joy, he said, these things I've spoken to you that my joy might remain in you. You can't have joy being disobedient to God. You can't. Read Psalm 51. What did David say? David wrote Psalm 51 and he said, You've broken my bones. There was no joy in David because he committed adultery at Bathsheba, had her husband murdered. Think about what Jesus said. If you keep my commandments, he said, then my joy will remain in you and your joy will be full. We should have fullness of joy. All the time. Hard times. Do we choose joy? I have to choose joy sometimes. When it gets hard, when it gets tough. It was hard watching Patty in so much pain when she had her knee surgery. But I have to choose joy. I have to. The situation my mom and dad are in right now. I have to choose joy. I have to. I won't choose the, I won't choose the alternative. I won't choose to be sad. I won't choose to be depressed. I won't choose to, to feel hopeless. I won't choose to get down. I, I don't. I won't go there. Jesus don't want me to. Jesus don't. Look what he just said. These things I've spoken to you that my joy might remain in you and your joy shall be full. We have to choose joy. We have to choose it. Or you could choose being down, depressed, sorrow. You can choose it. Sometimes it's really, really hard to choose joy because of the circumstances in your life. But I, I want to take us to Psalm 118 and see what it says. Psalm 118. Because if you got a choice to be walking around full of joy or you got a, walk, a choice to be walking around feeling sad, why, why would you not choose joy? But a lot of Christians do. A lot of Christians would rather choose sadness and unhappiness than choose joy. 
we have a choice. The Psalm 118, verse 24. Again, if you want to look at my Bible, it's got about a 10, 15 stars next to it. It says, this is a day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. That's a choice. That's a choice. This is the day the Lord has made. Might not be a good day. <laughs> it might be the day they fired you from your job. Might be the day you got a bad report from the doctor. It might be a day that wants to bring you down. But look what it says. We will rejoice and be glad in it. That's a choice. That's a choice. I could get down about my legs if I wanted to. I could think about all the things I'm missing. I could get down about my mom and dad if I wanted to. But I make a choice. I, I'm gonna be filled with I'm gonna be filled with the love of Jesus Christ and the joy of Jesus Christ. I made a choice. You know, we we all can make that choice. It's not just for me. It's for all of us. Yeah, something bad happened to you, something hard happened to you. I understand it. I understand it. Bad things and hard things have happened to us. I'm still going to choose joy. Because it's, it's not the circumstance that brings me joy. He says, I will put my joy in you. And all i got to do is say, Lord, fill me with your joy. This circumstance is hard. This is tough. I, <laughs> I need your joy today. I need your love today. I need your strength today. I need your peace today. I don't get out of bed with praying that prayer. I don't know what's going to happen today. I don't know what's going to happen this afternoon, and I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But I know one thing. I'm going to need his joy. I'm going to need his love. I'm going to need his strength. I'm going to need his peace. Do we make those choices? Philippians chapter 4. One of the most awesome chapters in the Bible. Philippians chapter 4. Why? Do we have peace? Jesus said, I leave you my peace. Again, it's not peace. It's a peace that comes straight from Jesus Christ. I leave you my peace. Uh, he says it's a peace that passes understanding. We can't understand how we can be peaceful in the, in the hardest situations going on in our life and we still got peace. Because it comes from Him. But we have to choose it. We have to choose it. It doesn't just come because you're saved. You have to choose it. Philippians chapter 4. I'm trying to get there. I see people get upset all the time. Why? Because they don't have the peace of God. Trust me. I, I, my, the biggest problem I have, I won't say the biggest problem, but one of the problems I got is, is driving. But I'm in good company because John Hagee has that problem. Joyce Meyer's husband has that problem. Robert Morris has that problem. And Stephen Furtick has that problem. <sighs> Why do I get angry about somebody who's sitting at a red light, the green arrow goes on, and they don't, they don't move, and I honk the horn, not in a hard way, just uh -uh, wake up. And then the, the, the arrow turns yellow, and then they, then they decide to go through a, the end of a yellow arrow, and, and I'm stuck waiting at a red light again. I get, I get angry. I get angry. I'm working on it. He's working on it. I'm better than I used to be. I used to carry rocks in my car, and, and if I didn't like what you did, I'd throw a rock. But I wasn't saved then. I didn't say that. I used to, I, to tell you. And they want to pull over, I pull over. Um, those were the days when I wasn't safe. But I'm like, why can't I just be calm about it? 
you know, and sometimes when I get angry and I get up next to him and I look over and it's an, an old man or an old lady, can't he? And I go, oh, forgive me, Lord. Why don't I have that peace? You know? But, but look what, what, look what God says in Philippians chapter 4. It's a choice. It's, it's a choice. In verse 6, Philippians 4 verse 6, God says, be careful, be anxious for nothing. He says, why are you anxious about what? What can you change by being anxious about anything? It's not going to change nothing. Why you worry about things? It ain't going to change nothing. Why do you fret about things? It ain't going to change nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep or guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Why don't we have the peace of God? Because we're not doing what he said to do. And then in verse 8, he says, And finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. It's a, it's, a, it's a battlefield of your mind. You don't have peace because what you're thinking about is the wrong thing to be thinking about. I could be thinking how bad it's going to be for my mom and dad in six months. I don't think about that. I think about how bad these legs might be in six months if the Lord doesn't heal me. I don't think about that. You can't have peace and be thinking and choosing to think about the wrong thing. God says, think on good things. If you're thinking on good things, you're going to have joy. If you're thinking on bad things, you're going to have dis despair and sadness and hopelessness. What we think about, the battlefield of the mind. Jesus said to capture every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's a choice. That's a decision. Why are you thinking like that? Why are you thinking like that? When he told you to think on good things. He tells us right there. If you think on good things, the peace of God that comes from God, which passes all understanding, you can't even understand why you have peace in this situation. It will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. We should be the most peaceful, joyful, loving, kind, strong Christians. If we choose, if we chose for ourselves blessings, if we chose them and do what God says to do. We've all gone through hard times. It's, 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 still, it's a choice on how we think. How we think. I talked about last night or last week. It's, it's the big picture. You know, it's a big picture. There, there's going to be hard things coming in our life. Jesus told us that. Why? why you know, why? Get ready for it because it's going to happen. But he also says joy comes in the morning. You got to take, take life the way it really is. You got to see life the way Jesus sees it. A lot of times, like I told Zach, a lot of times God's going to put us through stuff to grow us up spiritually. You know, we're not going to like it. I'll give you one example real quick before we close. When me and Patty got married, we, we had a first year. I know God stirred the pot. I know it wasn't us. It couldn't be me, for sure. But I know God, God, God stirred the pot up. <laughs> I said God stirred the pot up, honey. <laughs> well, I just knew it. I knew it wasn't. It wasn't. God stirred the pot up, but he had a reason for it. And see, I didn't know it then. I didn't know it then. I didn't know what was going on. I just looked at the Lord and said, what the heck's going on? That's why Proverbs 3, 3, 5 is my favorite verse. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own, own understanding. I, I don't understand it, but I still trust you. I'm, I choose to trust you. I choose to be filled with your joy. I choose to be filled with your love. I choose to be filled with your peace. I cho chose to be filled with your strength. I, I make them choices every day, every day. That's how I get through it. I don't know how you guys get through it, but that's how I get through it. Doing what God says to do. So we all have a choice, you know. We can choose to rejoice and be glad in, in God's day, or we can choose 
to do it different. Let's bow our heads. Holy Father, mighty God, we thank you so much, Lord, that you've given us a choice. You let us choose. That if we want to go to heaven, we, we choose to ask you to save us. That's, that's pretty simple. If we don't want to go to heaven, we choose not to ask you to save us. And you told us we get to choose blessing and cursing too, Lord. When we choose to obey you, to choose to do things your way, we get blessed, Lord. And we choose to do it our way. It doesn't turn out that well, Lord. Give us wisdom, Lord, to make wise choices, Lord. To look at our lives the way you look at it and say, Lord, I need your joy today. It's, it's a rough day. It's a rough day today. I need it. I need your strength today, Lord. I need your love today. <laughs> I need your peace today, Lord. I need you today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All righty, we'll sing the closing hymn, 282 in the hymnal. Family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain cleansed by his blood joint heirs with jesus as we travel this side for i'm part of the family the family of god i'm so glad i'm a part of the family of god I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. Amen. <laughs>